From one evacuation zone in Miami-Dade to another now in Hollywood, CBS 4's Kerry Codd has been there uh, this evening and into the morning. And Kerry, I'm just looking now at Broward.org slash hurricane, and I'm checking out their shelter list. And from what I see, I counted, it seems as though there are 19 shelters in Broward County that are already at full capacity. So I take that as a sign that people listen to those evacuation orders and they headed out. What are you seeing in Hollywood? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that, Lauren. In fact, I, I just saw your tweet and pulled it up myself. And if I'm looking at this correctly, it looks like the one at uh, the shelter at Tradewinds Elementary in Coconut Creek is the only one that's not listed as at full capacity. As you look at the winds and the situation here at Hollywood Beach, we can tell you that we've seen some wind gusts around 25 miles per hour or so. The winds have been very consistent throughout the uh, several hours that we've been here. The surf picking up, obviously, a lot of the sand just coming off the beach and, and uh, stinging you in the face. Uh, so things have definitely been consistent here with this type of weather for the last couple of hours. Uh, to your question that you asked, Lauren, one of the things that I have been really struck by throughout the, the week or so that we've been dealing with this is just exactly how serious the, uh, the residents of South Florida have been taking this situation. You know, after living through and dealing with hurricanes uh, in South Florida for, gosh, the better part of uh, a decade and a half now, I can tell you that, you know, you always have your hardcore people who are going to react and respond. But this time, it certainly feels like whether it was the magnitude of the storm or, as David mentioned, how early. Uh, Craig and, and Lissette and our other meteorologists uh, were on top of this situation, uh, preaching what needed to be done. But it certainly feels like people have heeded the call, have taken this very, very seriously, and are doing what they have to do to make sure that they stay as safe as they possibly can. And I think it's reflected by, you know, I remember being on this beach for one of the hurricanes. They all kind of run together after a while. But usually you would see people out still having a good time. Uh, you'd see people in some of the hotels hanging out, watching the scene. Uh, and tonight, this afternoon, this evening, there's been absolutely almost none of that. There's still been a few people that we've interviewed and that I've mentioned on air. We've seen a few people rollerblading. But if it's been 20 people, it's been a lot. Uh, and in the past, you might see, you know, several dozen hundred, couple hundred. So I think it really is an indication of just how seriously people have seen this. And when you see that track that what we were seeing over the last couple of days and just what that could potentially bring to us and you see that that curve coming straight up through Miami like we all saw over the last few days, um, I think it does bring a lot of things into focus. And of course now we're seeing a track that has shifted a little bit west. And, you know, from what I'm reading and, and from what Lissette and Craig are telling us, obviously, uh, this could all, you know, continue to change and meander depending on certain conditions. Over the last little while, uh, we've seen, again, more Hollywood police officers cruising up and down the strip. I had a chance to speak to one uh, or two of the officers who were in a vehicle. They told us that they're encountering very few people, just a few sightseers. Uh, most people uh, are indoors, very well behaved, taking things very seriously, as we've mentioned. Uh, my photographer, Rudy, and I, we drove around from Hollywood down A1A into Hallandale Beach, back over to US-1, and then made the loop back over here to the beach. Very few cars, almost no people, just a couple of people walking uh, around. So it has been um, very light on the people, which obviously is what our emergency and management officials want to see as the conditions continue to take a turn over the next 12 to 18 hours or so. That's really what we're seeing here in Hollywood at this point. Really appreciating it. Guys, your, back to you. We're, we're really appreciating your, your live picture here. It, it lightened up a little bit so we could better uh, see what's going on there. As you're standing there and as we hear the roaring of the ocean, and we saw you when we first came out to your hair kind of whipping in the wind. It looks good, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but which one of these elements has been more impressive to you? Is it that surf, the wind, uh, any rain you might have experienced out there? What's really kind of uh, the, the top uh, issue for you as far as elements when it comes to what you're experiencing? with this band coming through? 
We've had a little bit of rain, just very little bit. Actually, right now it's starting to rain again. Um, you know, after covering these storms for so many years, I would have to say the fact that we're seeing uh, this type of wind, even though it's not the type of wind that will knock you over in any capacity, uh, but just the fact that we're seeing this sustained type of wind at 23, 25 miles per hour, uh, that's been a little um, surprising to me. I didn't know that we would necessarily be having this type of sustained wind at this point. Um, so, uh, you know, Eugene, it's a great question. And obviously, it's just something that, you know, when we're out here reporting, we try to stay absolutely as safe as we can to try to bring some live pictures to people while we can, because, you know, there will be a point that we just simply cannot be out here in this type of environment where we have to get to some place where, uh, you know, it's just safer for, for us to be able to continue to report and uh, gather information and bring uh, needed information to people. Um, because, I, you know, obviously, Everybody wants to know what it's like. Everybody wants to know what's happening. Everybody wants to know how is this affecting my city, my community, my neighborhood, my house. Um, you know, that's what we're all focused on, my family, my friends, my church, my business, whatever it might be. And so, you know, we really want to try to bring that to people in as clear focus as we possibly can. We can definitely see the wind in, in your hair and the palm fronds. Earlier, when we were looking at uh, the live picture from David Sutta's camera as he drives through the Miami area, we saw a down fence. Have you seen anything like that there? Anything that's now out of place or has been blown over because of the wind? Wow, look at that American flag wow. in the wind. That's, that's impressive. Eugene, I have to be honest. It's, it's been so windy the last like 10, 15 seconds. I, I'm sorry, I lost you there. Uh, but I can tell you that if you look at this flag, I think it's a pretty good indication of just how stiff the wind is blowing and just how sustained uh, those winds are. Um, you know, it's always difficult to say because, you know, what we see out here and what we're able to transmit back over the, the pictures through the camera, uh, it doesn't always translate. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, we've been in storms where you literally could not stand up and you know, when you anticipate a storm like we're going to get with Irma, you definitely kind of have to consider, um, you know, how is this going to affect us? What do we have to look out for? What do we have to uh, do to, you know, protect ourselves and to stay safe? But, you know, at this point, it, it is just a very, very blustery, very gusty, sustained type of wind uh, that we're seeing. And, and obviously, we anticipate continue seeing that for the next several hours and the next several days, really. And, and Carrie, I hope you don't mind if I, I get a little personal with you. I, I follow you on Facebook. I know you have a wife and you got your beautiful son. So what sort of goes through your mind as you have to head to work, leave them all safe and prepared? Can you sort of speak to that and, and, and how you got them prepared for you to then come and do your job to serve the people of South Florida? Yeah, I mean, Lauren, you're a parent too. It's hard, um, you know, I think we all feel um, overwhelmed at, at some point, you know, to some degree, um, you know, whether you're a parent or not, uh, you know, you have loved ones and you want to make sure obviously that they're safe. So for us, uh, I'm a, I'm a very type A personality. I like to, you know, if there's a problem, you attack it, you deal with it, you, you, you know, handle it the best that you possibly can. And then you can at least put your head on the pillow at night, knowing that whether it worked out, you, you tried your best, you did your best. Um, so for us, we uh, weighed some options. My in-laws happened to be on the west coast of Florida. So uh, at one point, we were thinking that possibly uh, my wife and kids would go there to shelter with her family. Uh, but again, we weighed out. Was that the right move? This storm can move and the storm is so wide that, you know, it was really going to encompass the entire state, plus the traffic on the road. Could she get gas over there? How long would it take before she could get back home and the kids could get back to school and she could get back to work? So these are some of the decisions that we had to make as a family. Um, so instead, uh, and you know, would she stay in our home? We do happen to be blessed to be able to have uh, hurricane impact windows and doors. I don't know that they've ever been tested uh, like they could be tested with this storm. So that was certainly a consideration. And did I want her to be home uh, alone with, with me not being there? Because I, I certainly can't be driving back and forth um, so I decided that it'd be best for her uh, to shelter with some of our good friends. 
who have hurricane shutters and our children can be together and they can have something on, you know, that, that takes their mind off of uh, what's maybe happening outside and the wind and the rain and the noise, which, as you know, for children can be uh, anxiety producing. Heck, for adults, uh, it can be anxiety producing. So that's sort of the checklist that we went through for our family. And I, I thank you for asking. And, um, you know, we all have those situations. We all have to, to make those kinds of choices and decisions for sure. All right, Carrie, thank you so much for, for all of your valuable information, for the views you gave us there of Hollywood Beach, and of course, for, for your personal insight into the storm. And that's why I, I asked this question like this to sort of show we, we all go through the same concerns that the our same viewers checklist. are Everybody going through. through. Exactly. The yep. same warnings that we gave to our viewers is the same warnings that we also heeded. So, Carrie Cod, glad to hear that your family is in a nice, safe location, and, and hopefully you'll be seeing them very, very soon after all this coverage, which you're doing great at, so thank you so much. <laughs>